70 years before Magellan, Islam was already planted here. Nandito na yung mga evangelist. So when Spain said, Gunin ko pati Mindanao, and I would call the forefather. Komentaryong ito ay ginawa sa pangunguna ng Mercy Islamic Foundation sa layuning iparating sa mga tao ang tungkol sa katotohanan ng kasaysayan ng Islam sa Pilipinas. Na ang Islam ay ang relihiyon ng ating mga ninuno at kung paano sila dumating, namuno at nawala sa kapangyarihan sa ating bansa. Pinamagatan namin itong Call of Our Forefathers upang mabatid ng ating mga kababayan ang mga ikinubli sa ating kasaysayan at malaman natin ang panawagang pangkultura at paniniwala ng ating mga ninuno. Maraming salamat at samahan niyo po kami sa paglalakbay tungo sa ating kasaysayan. On the 20th of September 1519, Commissioned by Carlos I of Spain, Ferdinand Magellan left from Sanlúcar, Spain, cruising around the Cape of Good Hope on to the southern tip of Africa and then west around South America through the twisting passage bearing his name, the Strait of Magellan. On March 17, 1521, they spotted the island of Samar, which they named the Las Islas de San Lázaro, stop briefly at the islet of Homonhon and then disembark at Limasawa, another islet south of Leyte. At Limasawa, Magellan celebrated the first Catholic Mass in the Philippines on March 31st, 1521. <laughs> The First Confrontation The conquest or conversion of the various islands began, except the island of Matan, whose chieftain Lapu-Lapu preferred fire and blood instead of miserable submission to Christianity. He flatly refused to give even an inch of his land or to compromise his freedom. According to Sulu oral tradition, Lapu-Lapu was a Muslim chieftain also known as Calif Pulaka. In 1541, Antonio de Mendoza, the first colonial administrator of the New World, commissioned Ruy Lopez de Villalobos the expedition to Las Islas de Poniente, or now known as the Philippines. Upon reaching the shores of Samar, Leyte, and parts of Mindanao, 1543, he named the islands Las Islas de Filipinas in honor of King Felipe II. Felipe II ascended the throne and made it an official policy to colonize the Philippines. He ordered Miguel Lopez de Legazpi to proceed to the Philippines and to make it a permanent colony of Spain. In November 1564, the expedition under Legazpi left Mexico. Accompanying him as chief advisor and navigator was Fray Andres de Urdaneta, a scholar priest. From 1521, when Magellan came here, And up to 1570s, when the Spanish forces reached Manila at the time, they were surprised to find out that the whole of Mindanao were already ruled under the uh, Muslim Sultanate uh, system. They were fine. They, to their surprise, they found out that there were already principalities governed and ruled by Muslim leaders themselves. So you have the uh, kingdom of Silobong, which is actually uh, sometimes called kingdom of Kota Silobong, now Manila under, uh, under uh, Suleiman I, Raja Suleiman I. And you have uh, Lacandula, who was also the rich head of, the, of, uh, of Tondo. And, and all others already uh, professing Islam and at the same time uh, demonstrating very strong opposition and resistance against the Spanish entry into the area. So in the 15th century, you have now Luzon, you have Visayas, and all of Mindanao already becoming Muslim uh, uh, 
communities. Two important points in history. One, the first group of people whom the Spaniards in 1570 called Moros were those in Manila and environs and not the Islamized natives in Mindanao and Sulu. Two, the first Moro-Spanish War was not fought in the soils of Mindanao and Sulu, but right in what is now metropolitan Manila. At the famous Battle of Bangkusai off Tondo's shore on June 3, 1571, Raja Sulaiman, the last Tagalog martyr of Manila in defense of Islam against Spanish invasion, perished under the hands of Martin de Goethe. In a threatening voice, the fearless Raja Sulaiman made his stand clear on the issue of foreign policy. We wish to be the friends of all nations, but they must understand that we cannot tolerate any abuse. On the contrary, we will repay with death the least thing that touches our honor. Bold and piercing and true to his words, reminiscent of the Islamic slogan of all ages, victory or martyrdom. Raja Sulaiman, the last Muslim ruler of Manila, preferred martyrdom than to submit to the Spanish subjugation. After the fall of Manila, all resistance to Spanish rule except those fought in Mindoro in 1574 and the so-called aborted Magat Salamat conspiracy in 1587 had died down entirely in Luzon and the Visayas within a brief span of just 11 years. The Spanish invaders now became the new masters, not just for one barangay or confederation of barangays, but for the entire islands of Luzon and Visayas. This was the open declaration of war by Spain against the Moros of Mindanao and Sulu. As a matter of fact, this was the official beginning of the Moro-Spanish War, which was to drag on until Spain was ejected from the Philippines by the Americans in 1898. This was to last 327 years. So Spain tried itself, herself to get into the area to dominate because Luzon was already under Spanish uh, yoke and Visayas was also generating so much already. Uh, support for Spanish uh, sovereignty. And uh, they wanted to get into the area of Mindanao. But Sulu was the main problem. Because at that time, you know, there was already a prosperous uh, economic trade relationship between the Sultanate of Sulu through the port of Holo. Holo was an international uh, port which was engaged in international trading. The instructions of Governor General Francisco de Sande to Captain Esteban Rodriguez de Figueroa on the siege of Sulu in June 1578 and Bindanao in April 1596 were the following. You shall order them that there be not among them any more preachers of the doctrines of Mahoma, since it is evil and false, and that of the Christian alone is good. And because we have been in these islands so short a time, the Lord of Mindanao has been deceived by the preachers of Borneo and the people have become Moros. You shall tell them that our object is that he be converted to Christianity and that he must allow us freely to preach the law of the Christian and the natives must be allowed to go to hear the preaching and be converted without receiving harm from their chiefs. And you shall try to ascertain who are the preachers of the sect of Mahoma and shall burn and destroy the house where that accursed doctrine has been preached. And you shall see that it be not rebuilt.
On the 1st of April, 1596, Figueroa left for Mindanao with 50 war vessels, 214 Spaniards, and 1,500 native allies. The fleet reached the mouth of Pulangir, or what the Spaniards called Rio Grande de Mindanao. They landed at Tampacan, and Figueroa lined up his troops in battle array and delivered a stirring speech. Soldiers of Felipe, we stand upon the newest soil of Spain to subdue this dark forest and rid the soil of the infidel Muslim is our aim. They submit as vassals and converts or fall before the Spanish blades. Forward to our duty for king and country. Viva España! Viva España! Viva España! Viva España! Viva España! The jungles of Cotobato shook with a fierce battle that followed. Leading the Baguindanao warriors were the brothers Raja Silongan and Dato Ubal. Figueroa was cleft into two by a campilan wielded by Dato Ubal. The bones of uh, Captain, uh, Captain Esteban Rodriguez de Figueroa uh, are, uh, are still deep inside the soils of Maginano along the Pulangi when he was killed by Raja Silo Silogan and Dato Ubal. Mm -hmm. The colorful epic an unfolding historical saga of Islam will tell us that we, both Muslims and non-Muslims, can come to terms to achieve peace and harmony in the Philippines. Tolerance and mutual respect is the key to this effort. Assalamu alaikum.